She said that we have a lot of young ladies out here that are men in skirts because they look pretty on the outside and they got all of this, but deep down they are men. And I thought, I will say, I thought I felt seen in that moment. In that moment. In that moment. Now, if, if somebody wrote a song about her, I, it would be this. Ebony and masculinity live together in jagged harmony side by side like a pit bull. Please don't, oh no, don't bite me. Now I had to sing it with some soul because you know, you got to sing it in an ebony way and that's a masculine way. Ebony. Masculinity live together in perfect harmony. Side by side on a pinball. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, you can't even have a love song <laughs> with her. Okay, everything has to be like this. You know, I'm telling you, she should have been a preacher. This woman should have been a preacher because the church is calling you, girl. The Lord is calling Ebony K. Hey, man. Ooh, ooh. Hello, America, FBI and CIA agents and fellow cult members. Welcome to Culture Club USA. I'm Debrava. And today's riddle is... Aimless souls sacrifice a lifetime to surrender to the whims of sinful sacrilege. But as reflections clear, their past inceptions appear. The wage of corruption is surrender. The cost of silence is fear. Okay, on today's episode of only fans on trial. We are going to be reacting to the second segment of Listen to Black Women. Now, the ladies here have expanded the subject matter to masculinity in females. This should be fun. Let's dive in. I'm L'Oreal, and we're here with Elle Barner. I'm a feminine woman, and traditionally, I want to play the feminine role. Ebony K. Williams. Our show up in this world is Ebony K. Williams, and no man can just hop on that. And <laughs> now, hold on. Now, they're introducing themselves for you, so I don't need to do that for you. But I am going to remind you that this is a part two. And the first reaction that I did was very eventful. I'll just say that. So this should be very interesting. All right. I digress. And no man can just hop on that. And the beautiful Melissa Poor. I want to preface all my answers with the fact that I am a progressive traditionalist. And what did she just say? Okay, hold on now. Now, I already let Ebony K. Williams over here, uh, you know, she's talking about herself in third person. I am Ebony K. Williams and no man when I walk in the room, e when Ebony K. Williams walks in the room. I mean, she's nuts, okay? Melissa Ford just called herself a progressive traditionalist. Let me just hear that again. Beautiful Melissa Ford. I want to preface all my answers with the fact that I am a progressive traditionalist. Now, how exactly are you a progressive traditionalist? How does that work? How are you a traditionalist and a progressive at the same time? <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. So what is she, a prad con? No, a prag con instead of a trad con, a prag con. <laughs> A, a, a progressive traditionalist. You can't be progressive and be traditional at the same time. Uh, just saying. And let me tell y'all something. You are in for a treat of an episode because you are <laughs> sitting amongst women that are always going to tell it like it is, whether they get backlash or not. Now, we know this one over here. L'Oreal, I mean, she don't care if she gets backlash. It don't matter because she had the nerve to sit up on this stage and have these people clapping for her. Look, and she is wearing green nails, okay, and pea, banana, yellow hair. I mean, and these people are like, oh, you look so good, girl. You look so good. What Disney kids are you trying to be, huh? I'm, I'm, my daughter want to be that for this. Are you looking at this? Can you explain to me what crosses somebody's mind to wake up and say, I think today I'm going to wear banana yellow hair 
hair and green nails. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, not even banana yellow hair and yellow nails. No, 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 no. We're going to take it a step further. We're going to do banana yellow hair and we're going to put green nails on, girl. We got the whole rainbow in here. I have never, ever seen anything quite like this. And then she's uh, sitting in a Chanel jacket with jeans, okay? These these four items just do not work. <laughs> they just don't. Okay, now let's see where else this is gonna go. This will be really fun. I never also heard anybody talk like this. I don't know where this acting come from, okay? It's somewhere though. Now see on the red carpet talking just like this too. She interviewing all the celebrities. Hi, <laughs> my name is L'Oreal. I come from Neverland. Um, I come from a whole other planet. It's a Disneyland and, and you know, and today I am a big banana peel and I'm here to ask you some questions. This is who get the job now, okay? Uh, we thought Barbara Walters had a list, okay? I mean, I don't know what's going on here, all right? This girl's up in Barbara like, Barbara, you ain't got nothing on her, okay? She's taking everything from Barbara. We don't need no Barbara anymore. An episode because you are <laughs> sitting amongst women that are always going to tell it like it is, whether they get backlash or not. Basically, um, when you get to a certain age, your outlook on people does change a bit. You do you do start looking in other areas for love than mm. what you would have when you were younger, right? Oh, so absolutely. do you feel like with being more successful, that happened as well? Because the dating pool seems to get smaller the more successful we are. The mm. dating pool. No, the dating pool gets smaller when you're wearing this outfit, <laughs> okay? Because if you walk down the street and men see you, they're like, uh, I don't know what's going on. If he's trying to, th- she looks like one of these people that stand outside and they're like holding like <laughs> New York, <laughs> like when there's like a store closing, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And uh, somebody's in a banana and they're like store cl- and you feel so bad. And I always talk to them and like, and, and take the flyer. You know what I mean? Cause I mean, come on. You know what I mean? It's like some people are on hard times. Okay. And some people become millionaires after doing stuff like that. There's stories like that. So don't ever, don't, don't, don't underestimate, you know, uh, what is that line? Uh, That dishwasher may be your beholder. And clearly she is because she on TV right now. So I don't care what she was doing last year, the year before, 20 years ago. She on TV with green nails and yellow hair. Okay. But we sitting in here and uh, like four of these people don't even go together. I don't even like understand how a conversation could even happen among these four. I mean, when you look at them, you got Melissa Ford. He don't know what he's talking about. Okay. He can't even put a sentence together. He's talking about a progressive traditional. Like, girl, that don't make no sense. <laughs> you can't be both. I mean, unless you like, you know, what are you, what are you with Gemini? You got two personalities. I mean, seriously, are, are you a zodiac sign? Like one day I'm a progressive and the next day, oh girl, I'm a, I, I'm a trad con now. Yesterday I was a vegan. I mean, th- do you understand the absurdity of this? <laughs> I just don't. And I'm going to say it again. Elle Varner, the one in the purple suit, okay? What, she has such a nice presence. Such an, she, and she says she, she, you know, femininity, okay? And she actually is feminine. And she's very beautiful. And she's constantly smiling. And it's like, what are you doing sitting up here? What has happened to her? Somebody come and save her from these you-know-whats. All right. I've said enough. That's what we are. The dating pool is a waiting pool, okay? <laughs> I don't have the answer. I don't, yeah. other than to blame everything on social media. Uh, and then the gender war is on blogs every single day mm, is just yeah. contributing to the divisiveness between us. You know, it's, 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 when you go into the comments, it's such a sad state of affairs. I just leave, I'm just like, okay, I'm done. I, but then- I can't believe Melissa Ford. Now, let me just explain something. She's sitting here talking about the dating pool is a waiting pool. Let me just remind you, okay, of who this girl is. This girl has been around <laughs> some of the most sought after high value men in the industry that she's in. Okay. You're talking billionaires. She's been in next to every rapper. Right now, she's daily sitting next to Joe Buttons with a slew of high-value men coming on that show, okay? And she can't get a man. She's talking about the dating pool is a waiting pool. Now, can you imagine 
think about this. You've got beautiful women out here, right? That never get the opportunity to meet or become in the presence of a high, even one high value man, right? You're in some small town in, you know, Wichita, Kansas, right? You're not, you're not around, you know, I'm not Joe Buttons every day, bringing in every celebrity, Kanye. I mean, I, I, Jay-Z, I mean, how about forget about the people we know? How about the behind the scenes people that this woman is around? Okay. The producers, she has had a show, forget, she actually had a show selling real estate. Okay. I could go on and on and on. All right. How is this woman single? How is she up here talking about, well, the dating pool is a waiting pool? Really? I mean, well, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm done. I. But then cocktail. at what point, though, to, to that uh, issue, Melissa, can we engage, right? Because I do think, at least from my experience, anytime I pose a question or a proposition or a theory, it, it's positioned as a gender war. Mm -hmm. I know I, I don't believe in war. I believe in peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she believes in peace. She's talking about something being positioned as a gender war. Can you imagine going on a date with this woman? This woman will interrogate you. That's what a dinner is with her. It's an interrogation. It's not a date. It's an interrogation. Okay. I mean, her energy. I mean, this woman, she caught a lot of heat because she was saying that she wouldn't date no bus driver. Meanwhile, her mother drove a bus. Okay. Just pay close attention to Ebony K. Williams and the stuff that comes out of her mouth. It will absolutely shock you. The last episode of this that I got, I, I, I was floored at the comments that she made. It was disturbing. Just pay close attention. And peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I also believe is peace is not the same as silence. Mm -hmm. So you can't give me a scenario that I find unacceptable and expects me, expect me to just comply with it and call it peace. Mm -hmm. That's not peace. No. That's, that's uh, man manipulation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I can't do. But I, I think we've got to talk about it because the reality is I think Melissa and I specifically represent a generational gap too, right? Mm -hmm. Where we come from a generation being women in our 40s where gender roles were more concrete. Okay, where right. men were, had certain expectations. And let's be clear, women has certain expectations. Mm -hmm. And if we really want to name the thing that's so controversial, Melissa and I represent the first generation of women who generally and by and large represent economic power. That this is the first time in history. What is she, economic power? This is what she's talking about? Listen, all these women are up here single. Okay, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Now. We can all tell why Ebony K. Williams is single <laughs> and trying to have a, 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 a child on her own right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, here's another one. Show after show after show after show after show. Now, this is a very beautiful woman. Something has got to be seriously wrong with her to be single. <laughs> okay. Seriously wrong with her to be single. Anytime that she talks like this, first of all, her energy. How could you be this beautiful and come around with this energy like this? Okay. Now, this is what happens when you are around bus driver energy and you have the nerve, the audacity to say that you wouldn't date a bus driver when your mama was one and she worked for UPS. Now, you should be running UPS right now because that's the energy you have. And you would be lucky, girl, to get yourself a man who was working at UPS. P.S. Okay, because they have good pay, they are on time, they get your packages there, and they would put up with you probably. But I don't even know if that's true. Delusion. Who generally and by and large represent economic power. That this is the first time in history yeah. in which women have have found themselves in equal footing with men when it comes to finances and and professionally speaking. This yeah. is, there's there's nothing to kind compare, of compare it, to. it to. There's nothing. It didn't exist. It didn't um, exist. And so yeah. everybody still has that notion that everybody's you know vision of a perfect life is the white picket fence, getting married with the kids. And I was like, no, that was all that was available. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there was women in the 20s that were like, I don't want these kids and I don't want him. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, is she out of her mind? See, this is what happens when you don't know anything about history. This is what happens when, and, and I'm not even talking about you have to go to school, you have to know like history. You don't really have to know that, it's common sense. Let's think about this. In the 20s, they, did they have, you know, services, social services for women that were single? No, they didn't. 
in the 20s, women were having as many children as they possibly could because they needed those children to survive. They needed those children to take care of them later. They needed those children to go work in, in, in the cornfields, wherever, doing whatever. Okay. That's how, that's how families flourished. Is she at, like, th- th- these, these women, it kills me. They get up here. They complain about their lives. They complain about all these things, but they really don't know anything. And then they have the audacity to be sitting here talking about women in the twenties. Would, would, I don't really want this man or this children. Are you kidding me? Women in the 20s were doing anything and everything to make sure they had a husband at a very young age. It's called survival. Ridiculous. Or like, I don't want these kids and I don't want him. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But what was the option to a woman back then? But now a woman could say to herself, "Mm, that's not my ideal you know, like life goals. I, I really, take care of I want, I want to take mm-hmm. care of myself. I want to be rich auntie. I want to travel. <laughs> so why are you here talking about you don't have a man? <laughs> why are you here talking about the dating pool is a waiting pool, Melissa? You don't know why, 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 why? This woman is nuts. <laughs> Look, don't forget now why we're here. They're here talking about how all of them are single. Okay, and that they can't find a man. If you're happy being alone, why are you here talking about being single and that the dating pool is a waiting pool? Why is it even something you're even speaking of? Why why is it even a subject that you're even talking about? Why aren't you talking about your jobs and how successful you are and all the money you got and all your OnlyFans and all that? Why why aren't you talking about that? (laughs) Seriously, listen to black women. Does it have to always be about dating? Isn't there anything else wonderful that you can talk about? And it's all negative. Notice that. Everything is negative. I want to see the world and I don't really want to be burdened with, you know, the responsibilities that somebody would say, hey, I love this thing. Yeah. You know, we're all, it's, it's just, it's your own, you know, personal sense of, of identity and what mm-hmm. makes sense to you. And this is the first time in, you know, in ever where yeah. women have the wide berth to really investigate what their wants, what their needs as an individual mm. and not a monolith yeah. Yeah. is. Beautiful. The, this woman makes no sense. Oh, don't forget, she's a progressive traditionalist. <laughs> don't forget. Don't forget. Can you imagine somebody on a day where her just confused as all hell, like, a what? Wait, so you voting for Biden or, or Trump? But who are you voting for, girl? Like, what? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> no sense. Also have choice, right? Mm-hmm. I think there are women that have intrinsic value in being a wife mm-hmm. and in being a mother. And I want to make that, that was the point of the MRS degree. That's what I was going to ask. Yes, yeah. that was the point is I'm, I'm not the threshold for most women that I know. Mm-hmm. Um, I am an anomaly. I am an outlier. <laughs> okay. Can you, you see where I'm going with that? You hear how she talks about, I am an anomaly. I am an outlier. I'm amazing. I'm out of one to 10. If I had to rate myself, honey, I would be a hundred. Okay. Cause ain't no woman can do what I do. Nobody looks this good. I was on for, for survivor. I survived for, for, for 29 days. I, I've had every single kind of reality show experience. You can, I'm a judge. I am a judge. I am, you know, my, 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 my thing dilapidated. So what? I'm still a judge. Okay, and I'm sitting here today. I was on Stephen A. Smith last week. Okay, yeah. So what? Yeah, he wanted me. I didn't, I wasn't interested. Okay, I wasn't interested because he's not good enough. He don't make enough money. I had a billionaire. Yeah, he left me. So so what? I changed my mind. I rather would have been alone during COVID. Okay, and that's how that works. Okay, now you understand what I'm saying? Because I am amazing. I am Ebony K. Williams. And when Ebony K. Williams walks into the room, everyone looks at her because she is phenomenal. Okay, I am someone who has been married earlier in my life. I got divorced very quickly and I realized... Well, we know that's a, that's a fact. <laughs> she got divorced very quickly. Now, that that's about a truth right there. <laughs> that's the one non-delusional thing that she's actually said. And we know why. <laughs> my life, I got divorced very quickly, and I realized for me, being married and being a wife in and of itself has no intrinsic value. Um, so that means I am not willing, nor am I incentivized, to give a lot in order to have those capacities. Right. But I think that's not common. 
I think most women, especially black women, do desire nuclear family. I think they Agreed. do desire it. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets complicated, to your point, Melissa. What, they're not so desirous of it that they are willing to do it under any and all circumstances, mm -hmm. okay, as right. the generation previous to them had right. to do. Mm -hmm. So now what you've got is a generation of black women that say, listen, I would love to not be the breadwinner. I would love to take my money that I make as a nurse, my money that I make as a school. Okay, first of all, this woman loves to hear herself talk. She could go on and on and on. I am this. I am amazing. I am that. I am amazing. Hear me talk. Hear me roar. I am woman. Hear me roar. Now, you know what I'm saying? Because everything I do is amazing. Okay? This woman is literally the most narcissistic being I have ever heard. Literally in my life. Literally. The comments that come out of her mouth. I wish somebody would just edit up every little thing that she's in one reel mind mind blowing okay mind blowing and what is she talking about right here do you hear what she's actually saying it makes absolutely no sense so you want a nuclear family and you want tradition but you want to be working as a nurse <laughs> no no women go working as nurses and get degrees because they don't have a man that can take care of them okay that's how that works that's how that works you don't you know have the fairy tale you know traditional nuclear family and want to go work. That's not how that works. Women are supposed to be home tending to the kids, okay? That's how that works. But you, people like her, everything's about a degree, a degree, a degree, a degree, a degree. What, are, what have these degrees done for her? She hasn't had one hit show on television. She hasn't written one hit thing. I don't know if her book was a hit. Can't say. But what, what has she done? She's done a million things, but none of it's really amounted to much of anything. Are you Oprah, Ebony? Are you Oprah? Are you pulling in those ratings? No, you're not. I love to take my money that I make as a nurse, my money that I make as a school principal, my money that I might even make as an attorney, and put it in the kitty. Put it towards something. Instead, though, what they're being forced to do, y'all, many of them, because we all know these women, they're being forced to put the family on their back. They're being forced to pay all the bills, do most of the child care, and turn a blind eye to you out here in these streets. Yeah. And Woo. because they... That, <laughs> Hello now. Okay. <laughs> and a generation... Where does she get this from? Do you think it has any anything to do with the men that you're, you're, you're chasing after? And... The, Let's let's think about this. So you're chasing after a certain type of man. With her, I'm going to assume it's the pool boy, you know, because she's somebody that needs abs and all of this and all of that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like Melissa Ford in the last one. She was like, well, I would date the bus driver if he looked like Boris Kojo. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Now, if she's dating somebody and she's paying all the bills, mm, that's what you chose. And again, this woman right here, she's choosing to have a baby on her own. Okay, this, this is the same woman sitting here complaining about having the family on my back and doing all this and paying all the bills. But I'm up here having a, I'm about to have a baby on my own. I'm sitting here sticking myself. I am going through the uh, in vitro birth. I'm doing a donor. I went and I picked out a baby because she wants a designer baby. You see what I'm saying? She's actually getting a designer baby. That that's that's that's. That's her mentality. I want it to look a certain way. I got to see the donor. I know what he looks like. I know what eye color he has. I know how tall he is. I'm going to create my own baby. I, it's a Build-A-Bear. <laughs> she should go to Build-A-Bear and get it, get Build-A-Bear. You understand how, how in outer space these women are? They are literally living on planet Mars. <laughs> and a generation ago, women had to ride with it because they did not have the kitty. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a stream of independent income that allowed them the exit strategy mm -hmm. that yes. is available to black women today. I literally had to exit strategy. This is this is how we're entering into a relationship, already preparing for an exit strategy. <laughs> an exit strategy. This is the mentality. Well, yeah, how do you of course you're divorced and how, you know, quickly. Yeah. If you enter into a relationship already thinking about an exit strategy, uh, are you really that into the relationship? I'm going to go with no. All right, let's see what this bimbet has to say here, Melissa Ford. 
I literally had to explain to the guys that up until 1976, women could not have their own bank accounts without literally. a man's signature. If mm -hmm. it wasn't her husband, it was her father. Yes. Ooh, that is that is massive. You know, when you think about that and, you know, contextually mm -hmm. as to what she was permitted, what she was permitted to do, permitted. choices that just were not available to her, mm -hmm. which is why women are so, you know, they're holding on to their sense of independence, like hard earned independence now. You know, the abilities to make these choices, to go to school, invest all their time into a profession, career, and understand that nuclear family doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. This is just as good. And that's something that a lot of, I'm going to say men don't really actually but is want it to. Now, first of all, this is what I'm saying about Melissa Ford. She just got through saying that... <laughs> <laughs> she just got through saying that women could not have their own bank accounts until the 70s. Okay, first of all, she, she, here we go with these nonsensical. They, they just say anything. They just say anything. First of all, that's that's a, a, a complete false statement. That that statement is completely false. My father is in banking my whole life. Okay. Women could have bank accounts since the 60s. I don't know what she's talking about, okay? And even today, let's do the math, okay? Banks don't have to give anybody accounts, and they can also take your accounts away. Let's look at those uh, sixers, okay? And how about the yays, all right? When they don't like what you say, they just say, you are no longer banking here, okay? Because they're, it's their right to do. This, this woman makes absolutely no sense. That, and then you've got these people here listening to her and they're like clapping for her and everything. And meanwhile, nothing she says is, is factual, okay? That's something that a lot of, I'm going to say men don't really actually want to But is it just hear. as good though? And I think that's where it gets complicated. I think for a lot of women that find themselves at, at our age, Melissa, they're asking that existential question. So they're saying, so, you know, at least so, some of my friends, some of my sorority sisters, they're like, okay, let's let's look at this. I do have my my house. Now she's talking about is the nuclear family just as good? Okay, just so it's clear. But is it just hear. as good though? And I think that's where it gets complicated. I think for a lot of women that find themselves at, at our age, Melissa, they're asking that existential question. So they're saying, so, you know, at least so, some of my friends, some of my sorority sisters, they're like, okay, let's let's look at this. I do have my my house, my mm -hmm. mortgage. Mm -hmm. I do make literally most of them over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year without batting an eye. Not to say it was easy, but it, they're doing it mm -hmm. every day. Um, and they they. Wow. First of all, you're making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year without batting an eye. <laughs> you must be in an elite crowd, okay? Because it's, it's, it's very difficult to make $250,000 a year without batting an eye. They, these women, you know, you know what I don't like about what she's, where she's going? Now, she has a point here. What she's, you know, Melissa Ford is saying, you know, if the nuclear family doesn't work out, then this, which is being alone and, and being a feminist working woman, okay, with your own money is just as good. And Ebony is saying, well, is it just as good? Because a lot of her sorority sisters are saying this or that, and we're gonna get into that. But the point is this, what I can't stand is that these women get on here and they actually are successful. Each and every one of them, uh, each and every one of them are successful in their own right, okay? All right, but they wanna get up here and tell all the rest of the women in the country, in the world, right? They're, my sorority sisters are making, you know, $250,000 without batting an eye. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So they push these feminist ideas, right, onto the average female, right, right, that are not in the positions and have not had the opportunities that these women have had. I mean, let's think about it. Melissa... $250,000 without batting an eye, as if, as if there was no sacrifice involved. Do you know how, what a false narrative this is? And how difficult you're making women's lives? So who, you really, is this what you want to be? In your 40s with no man, and now you want a family with no man again. So now you're paying a sperm bank and a donor to have a child at this late date. Really? Ridiculous.
every day. Um, and they, they got their Louis, they got their Louboutins, they got their Birkins. And now they're saying, what else? Mm -hmm. What else? And I think that's a fair proposition, too. So mm -hmm. the MRS degree conversation was really about that uh, sector of women right. that feel like I chose what my mother and grandmother told me to because to your point, Melissa, they didn't have a choice. And I think that's why so many of us were raised this particular way mm -hmm. that says, I want you to have the choices I didn't have. Yep. And it's amazing because we do. And thank God, that's why there are less women being battered in their homes today than mm -hmm. there were a generation ago, mm -hmm. right? So let's be clear, the advances are important. And also now we're being asked to make a different choice. Mm -hmm. So if we want it all, we're paying on the front end of the back end, is yes. what my experience shows me. She's right about that. She's paying on the front end and the back end because <laughs> she's sitting here alone trying to have a baby on her own. I mean, this is this is this is the craziest panel of women I've ever seen. <laughs> they are all just delusional, delusional. Let's see where it goes. Let's keep going. Yeah, it's yes. what my experience shows me. I just know, traditionally, <laughs> right? Yeah. As women, we can decide for ourselves, am I a masculine, masculine woman? There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Some women want to be in control and they can have a man that is, you know, taking notes or whatever, you know. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Now, this is the most I've heard her speak, okay? This is, L. like, this is the most I've heard her speak. Now, you could tell that she's pretty feminine, right? I, I don't know what she's doing around these women, but you see how they've already corrupted her? She's basically saying that some women want to be masculine and that's okay. And you could basically have a simp. Go find a beta male. Be a simp. You play the male role. I mean, wh why? Why is she saying this when she is feminine and she's said over and over that she likes to be feminine? And that's kind of what she believes, right? So, But she's sitting here amongst them and they're all masculine. You know, they all like this and I don't need to do this. And you know, and Ebony K. Williams, just the way she sits. She can't even sit in a feminine way. Oh, no, she has got to be sitting like this. She's got to be doing this and that and eat. But I, I could do not say a word. And this is, mm, 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 okay? Why is she sitting here trying to, you know, acquiesce to their nonsense? That's what feminists do. You get around feminists, you, you are who you hang around with. And want to be in control. And they can have a man that is, you know, beta. Taking notes or whatever, you know, that's <laughs> not, that's, that's no, holding notes. the purse. Okay. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hold my bag. Pull up. I, I need you to that. go here, do that, yeah. like whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's the house husband. The beta man. The beta man. <laughs> no, but if not. it's a, if I'm the masculine, you're the feminine, and that's what I, I want, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But if I want to be a feminine woman, right. you need to be in control. There's so many men that are, just say that they want a feminine woman. They want a submissive woman. They mm -hmm. want a delicate woman, you know, and in order to, you know, have that sense of control. I was just like, I don't know one woman, you know, well, maybe a few, but like the majority of women <laughs> that I know, they would let you lead if they didn't think you were leading them to hell. Yeah. Like, no. where are we going? I've been led My to hell before. Where <laughs> are we Twice. going? If you don't have a plan, yeah. and I have a plan, that's a problem. Also, it that's is. what's sad is who would want to lead her anywhere? <laughs> I'll tell you where they're leading her, okay? They're leading you right out the door. They're like, the check has been paid for. I'm going to lead you right to an Uber. <laughs> Out the door, okay? That's the problem with her. It's your energy. Nobody wants to lead you anywhere but as far away from them as possible, okay? Because you don't have anything to bring to the table. <laughs> what? what? Like, look at this. Look at look at how she acts. Uh, can you imagine? This is what you get when you walk in the door with her. Da -da 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 I don't make enough money. I ain't on the net. Joe Button ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. He's stealing my money. I don't even my money. And then she looked like this too. Behave like men. Walk like men. Talk like men. Discipline like men. Act like men work like men, and then complain that they don't have one.
Unbelievable. I have a plan, and I have a plan. You have a plan, and I have a plan. If you ain't got a plan, and I have a plan, and that plan is to get on OnlyFans and be a foot model and make my money and get my own stuff and do my own thing and do 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 Okay, we get it, Melissa. You masculine girl. You masculine. That's a problem. Well, so it that's is. what's sad is because that's really what I was asking Dr. Ayan Lavanzani. The original question, right? Yeah. The original question went like this, y'all, because she had sis uh, had done the Breakfast Club, and what she said was, I thought provocative, and I was interested in it in a good faith way. She said that we have a lot of young ladies out here that are men in skirts. Wow. Right. And you are looking at one right here. <laughs> There are a lot of ladies out here that are men in skirts. And Ebony K. Williams is one, okay? Because when Ebony walks in the room, she walks in the room with a masculine energy and a skirt on, okay? And this is part of the problem with her, all right? She is masculine as all hell, okay? When you think of Ebony K. Williams right here, when you think of her, okay, and the way she talks, and look, everything is this, 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 and that, and that, and this, and this, and this, and this. Can you imagine coming home at night? And dear, this is what you have to do. And the pool ain't right, and that's not clean, and I don't appreciate these dishes here. And when you come into the bathroom, I want the toothpaste done like this, and done like that, and done like this, and done like that. I would love to know who her first husband was that she divorced. I would love. Actually... I wonder if he's an R&B singer. What's he do? What's he do? Now, if, if somebody wrote a song about her, I, it would be this. Ebony and masculinity live together in jagged harmony. Side by side like a pit bull. Please don't. Oh, no. Don't bite me. Wow, wow, wow. I had to sing it with some soul because, you know, even when it's a song that's supposed to be, you know, kind of smooth, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, Michael Jackson and, and, and whoever was singing it, uh, I forget, uh, 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 Paul McCartney, you know, you got to sing it in an ebony way. And that's a masculine way. Ebony, masculinity, live together in perfect harmony, side by side on a pinball, uh, uh, uh. I mean, you can't even have a love song with her. Okay, everything has to be like this. You know, I'm telling you, she should have been a preacher. This woman should have been a preacher. Okay, forget. Somebody needs to get her a preaching show. Somebody needs to get Ebony K. Williams a preaching show. Forget about the judge. Forget about all that. Forget about the fake survivor and the, and the, and the New York City housewives. Oh no, she wants to make that money. Well, you should be Reverend Dollar, Reverend Dollar, masculinity, femininity, Ebony K. Williams. I want you to give me that money, cause Jesus came in and said to give me that money. I want you to give me that money, give me that money, and I can get on the keyboard. You give, give me that money, give me that money. We got some masculinity in this house tonight. I'm taking you to church. Church, I'm taking you to church, 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 church. Somebody, I'm going to actually produce it. I'm going to produce it. I'm going to produce this chick. I'm going to make, I'm going to get richer. I'm going to get very wealthy. Because <laughs> I'm going to produce the right show for her. See, nobody knows what to do with her. I do. Interested in it in a good faith way. She said that we have a lot of young ladies out here that are men in skirts. Wow. Right? That's what she said. She said that our men in skirts, because they look pretty on the outside and they got all of this, but deep down, they are men. They are leading with their masculinity. And I thought, I will say, I thought I felt seen in that moment mm -hmm. because I said, you know, I look as feminine as possible because I am trying to um, overcompensate. I'll, I'll own it. I'll be vulnerable. I am trying to visually overcompensate for what I know is a default masculine posture that I walk through the world with every day. Mm. Did you hear what she just said? Here comes the narcissist. I try to visually overcompensate because I know how beautiful I am, okay? Out of a one to 10, I told Stephen A. Smith, honey, I'm a 39, okay? And I'm talking about one to 10. I'm three times every lady you ever been around. 
Okay? And this is what I'm going to tell you. Actually, you know what? My church at Ebony K. Williams, okay, we are going to have all women deacons. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? We are going to have a church full of women. Full of women. We are going to have only women deacons. And that's how that's going to go down. And I am going to heal you from top to bottom. You understand me? I'm going to heal you of that femininity. We're going to rid you of that femininity. We're going to get it right out of your system. Because Jesus was a woman. And God is a woman too. Okay? That's what she's talking about. Mm. Of course I do. You, you see my taxes. Uh, so, um, <laughs> no, I mean, but for real, you know, I got, I got a payroll, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so mm. when you are, I got a payroll, I got a payroll, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm special. I got a payroll because you know, all that money I've been getting from all them billionaires I've been dating that, you know, kick me to the curb, you know, I did get something out of that and I know how to put it away. <laughs> you understand me? That's why we're going to go to the church at Ebony K. Williams. Cause I'm going to teach you <laughs> how to hustle. <laughs> I've been hustling my whole career. I ain't never did nothing and I'm still here, aren't I? I managed to get everywhere, every place, all the time. I am everywhere, all at once. And I am rich. I am skinny. I am. Because I am. Leading in this way, when you are providing, not just for yourself, but for those around you, your whole community, how, how are you not? masculine yeah. in your energy, right? Yeah. But to Melissa's point, most of the women I know, especially the black women, we would love if we didn't have to. Woo. What people don't realize- pink. What'd you say? I wanna be soft and pink. Correct. Yeah. What most people don't realize is that most masculine women are masculine by mandate, not by choice. Mm -hmm. yes. We're masculine because we have been made to be. Yeah. We're masculine because if I don't go qualify for this mortgage, if I don't put these kids in the best schools, if I don't really make sure that my neighborhood is safe for me and my children to walk down, it won't be safe. Mm -hmm. And my question to Dr. Von Zott was, Ayanla, what would you- You're five feet tall. Who and what are you keeping safe? <laughs> okay. Now, now maybe Elle could help you out keeping something safe, but no, you're not saving anybody, including yourself. Okay. And look at, look at, look at this. Look how she's got her. I'm telling you, this woman's a preacher. Look at the, look at her. She's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yes. Amen. 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 Okay. Yes, Ebony. Uh-huh. Yes, Father Ebony. Father Ebony. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Look at this. This woman is five feet tall. Okay. Five feet tall. She ain't saving nobody. Mortgage. If I don't put these kids in the best schools, if I don't really make sure that my neighborhood is safe for me and my children to walk down, it won't be safe. Mm -hmm. And my question to Dr. Von Zott was, Ayanla, what would you have us do as these men in skirts who don't want to be men in skirts? We want to be women in femininity, mm -hmm. but we don't, we are afraid. Let's just name yeah. it. There's a fear of most black women today, y'all, that the man that we desire to keep us safe and provided for does not exist. Yeah. Either he is unwilling or unable. And I'm gonna go back to unwilling. Yeah. Willing. Either unwilling. He is unwilling or unable. And I'm gonna go back to unwilling. This woman is actually sitting here saying that there's a fear of femininity. But I just hate that the, the taking care of is always put towards masculine. Yeah. Because that's where I think things get No, confused. I didn't mean it in, no, in, no, in that way. No, no, not specifically yeah. you. I mean just as a whole. Mm -hmm. When the woman steps up and takes care of things, now she's masculine. Right. Yeah. And it's like, well, we are take care, care of. Yeah. Take care I think of. there's the nurturing part of taking care of that women get to be. And then I think there is the provision, mm -hmm. the, the financial and the kind of safety mechanisms of providing that people put on men. I'll close with this for me, at least. Um, I do think a lot of understandable critique of some of my positions is that's all great and dandy. But once again, why is it back on black women? Yeah. Why always. is every note, theory, commentary point telling black women what to do or what not to do. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I will say it is this way, ladies, is because I am a black woman. If I were a black man, I would be giving all of this business to black men. Mm -hmm. But it cannot be a black woman. I have learned the hard way that can 
pour into black men around what black masculinity looks like. Mm. It requires a black man. So my hope and prayer is it relates to whether we want to call them gender war. First of all, um, again, go Google her. I want you to count, okay? It's going to take more than two hands to count the amount of opportunities men and women have given her, okay? You understand that? I just want to know how you can be one of the most beautiful black women on television, sitting here complaining and singing, okay? How is it that you had a billionaire in your presence that left his family for you and then left you shortly after? <laughs> went back to his family during COVID, okay? Because he didn't want to die with you in COVID because nobody knew what was going to happen. That's how masculine... I mean, he didn't know if he was gay, straight, or what, okay? I mean, her beauty is absolutely... I mean, is she beautiful or what? I mean, look at this. How could this woman be single? How? How? Think about that. We want to call them gender wars, mm -hmm. whether we want to call it good faith conversations among black men and women to see what does this relationship look like for the future generation. I want a black, I want some, uh, I want a litany of black men to step up at to, to the leadership position mm -hmm. and talk to black men, especially the young ones. I can't about name one. What, I can't well, name Well, that's one. why this is my plea. This yeah. is my call to action. You, you're right. By the way, the billionaire she was dating, who wasn't black? Uh, I need <laughs> black men to talk to black men about how to lead, how to provide, and how to protect. Boop. Boop. Drops mic. <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing conversation. Thank you so much, Melissa, Ebony, Elle. You already know with the facts and everything. <laughs> Big shout out to our team, our crew in here, and of course, the lovely audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. We want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Give yourself a round of applause. Oh my God. Give yourself a round of applause. And I am Ebony. And when Ebony K. Williams walks into the room, billionaires come fleeing and they all after me. And you know what I do? I say, I don't really need you. Give me your money. Let me put it aside and let me move on to the next one. And hi, and I'm Melissa Ford and I've been around every single person I can even imagine in my business. Everyone from producers to directors to the writers to the most famous people in rap and I've been in thongs in every single video and now I'm an OnlyFans prostitute and now I make all my money on my own and I am alone and I am going to die alone and I'm going to be old and bitter and I got my girls and I will have Ebony K. Williams who is going to get impregnate herself by the way and raise a child in that masculine man. I'm telling you I'm telling you Ebony I want you to hear me out I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. I need you to change directions for that baby you about to have. I want you to change directions for that baby. Because that baby's gonna need a college fund. Yes, sir, he is. She is. And I need you to change into the whole new world of the church. Because the church is calling you, girl. The Lord is calling. Ebony K. Williams. Hey, man. Ooh. Ooh. I cannot take it any longer. I have got to produce her show. Ebony, I want you to call me as soon as possible. I am going to produce and pay for it and get you hot. And I'm talking real hot. Okay? We're going to put you in a picture suit. And you are going to be the new female Reverend Dollar. <laughs> I'm DeBrava. I hope you enjoyed listening to black women as much as I did. Amen. Now, I hope you come back soon. Make sure you click the like button because we want all of them to know how much you like us. <laughs> Bye. I hope you like my green nails.